Hi everyone, welcome to a new episode of Explore and Engage with Anam. New Yorkers are very upset and there are many reasons for that. It, it's, I, I, I've been sharing with you news and updates from New York City for quite some time now and I have been talking mostly about the migrant crisis and um, the public safety situation in New York City. And most recently what happened was that there was flooding in New York. And you may have read the news about the flooding that took place in New York City. I've seen some images and some video clips and it was just unbelievable. It was unbelievable to see the streets of New York City flooded and there was a lot of water and people faced tremendous inconvenience. And based on some of the reports that I've seen, the risk of flooding is still not over. And it, it seemed to me that some of the streets, if you, if you saw some of, the, some of the video clips that I saw, it seemed to me that the streets of New York turned into a river. There was so much of flood water and obviously that's tremendous hazard. Now that's not the entire problem. Let's, let's go back to the issue of the migrant crisis that I have been talking about for a while now. Migrant crisis remains a big problem and perhaps it is the, it is the biggest problem that the residents of New York City are facing right now. New York when you look at the liberal leaders of New York, and I'm talking about both New York City and New York State. New York City has a liberal mayor. New York State has a liberal governor. If you, if you look at what the liberal leaders of New York are doing, the only conclusion that, that you can draw is that it, New York has a highly irresponsible government. The people in government, the liberal leaders who are in different elected offices in New York, what they are doing is highly irresponsible. It's a government that does not care about the people. And that is pretty obvious. A government that does, that does not care about New Yorkers. Kathy Hochul, the governor of New York. Kathy Hochul says that the migrant crisis will require substantial amount of money. How substantial? That's the question. Reportedly, the state has already spent $1.7 billion, billions, $1.7 billion on the migrant crisis. That's already spent. That's how much the state has already spent, $1.7 billion. And the costs, reportedly, the costs in the next year could reach $4.5 billion. I've talked about Chicago before. What's going on in Chicago, the city of Chicago? In the city of Chicago, a sanctuary city just like New York City, in the city of Chicago, the cost of taking care of the migrants through the end of the year is an estimated sum of $345 million. And if we want to talk about the financial situation of the city of Chicago, how, how do you think the city is doing? If I were to ask you, is the city of Chicago doing well financially? If, if that's the question I ask you, what would be your guess? Is the city doing great? Is the city financially very strong? Is the city um, not doing well? What would be your guess? The city, let me tell you my friends, the city of Chicago is not doing well financially. 
there is a projected budget deficit of, can you guess the number? Can you make a guess? I'm, I've, I've revealed to you that there is a projected budget deficit. But how, how big is that deficit? Can you make a guess? Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share with you the numbers here. There is a projected budget deficit of $538 million in 2024. And I'm talking about the city of Chicago. That's how much the projected budget deficit is for 2024. $538 million. And of that $538 million, approximately, approximately 200 million, approximately a figure of 200 million is because of the cost of taking care of the migrants, according to reports. It is pretty obvious that the city of Chicago cannot afford to take care of the migrants. New York City cannot afford to take care of the migrants. New York State cannot afford to take care of the migrants. Our country, the United States of America, cannot afford to take care of the migrants. And yet, and yet, the Biden administration is keeping the southern border open. I'm going to share with you some numbers, some latest data regarding border crossings. Reportedly, 260,000 migrants have crossed the southern border in the month of September. And today, as I'm talking to you, this is October 1 of 2023. This is the first day of October of 2023 and in September according to reports 260,000 migrants crossed the southern border to enter the United States the estimated population I'm, I'm just for the sake of comparison the estimated population of Madison Wisconsin and Madison is the city that I live in it's the capital of Wisconsin. The estimated population of Madison, Wisconsin is 272,000. 272,000 people. That means that the population of migrants who crossed the southern border in September is almost, is almost the size of Madison, Wisconsin. Madison's population is an estimated 200,000. 72,000 and reportedly 260,000 migrants crossed the southern border in September. So that's how many people got into the U.S. by crossing the southern border. The number of people is almost the same as the population of the city of Madison. And the Biden administration is allowing this to happen. The Biden administration is allowing, allowing the border to stay open and migrants are coming in. Th this situation is completely out of control. On the other hand, the same administration, on the other hand, this very same administration is trying to control the lives of the American people by dictating what kind of home appliances we can use. The administration reportedly announced regulatory action to target gas, gas powered furnaces. The administration, the Biden administration reportedly announced regulatory action. I'm repeating again, regulatory action to target gas-powered furnaces. And what's the goal in doing all this? Reportedly, the goal is to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. But in reality, people's freedom will be reduced. 
This is an attack on the freedom of Americans. My friends, people elect leaders so that the leaders can govern in a way that does not diminish our freedom. But Joe Biden, along with his team of unelected bureaucrats, are busy, Joe Biden and his team, together they are busy imposing more and more restrictions on people's lives. And this is the latest example of their war on home appliances that would directly affect our freedom. My friends, people are free to decide what kind of home appliances they want. Whether it's a oven, whether it's a stove, whether it's a furnace, water heater, people should be able to go to the market and choose whatever kind of appliances they want. Demand and supply. But here we can see that the Biden administration is trying to dictate what kind of appliances Americans can use. And this action, this effort by the Biden administration to use regulatory efforts, to use regulations to try to control what kind of appliances we can use, this goes against freedom. Let me switch to a different topic. I was talking about Madison, Wisconsin earlier. Madison, Wisconsin population, approximately 272,000 people. Madison, Wisconsin has been ranked the most neighborly city in America. I know, completely different topic. I was just talking about gas furnaces and uh, bureaucrats and regulatory action now, and now I've switched to talking about Madison, Wisconsin. Now, um, I do want you to share your thoughts with me. I, I try to cover a few different topics in an episode and I would appreciate if you reach out to me and share your thoughts, if you have any, if, you, if, the, if there are comments that you want to share with me, feel free to reach out, go to dasifanam.net send me a message, sign up for my e-newsletter. You can also connect with me on social media. Just share with me your thoughts on the migrant crisis, the border crisis, the Biden administration's war on home appliances, and any other topic that you wish to comment on. Just reach out to me, let me know your thoughts. Okay, going back to Madison, Wisconsin. The city has been ranked the most neighborly city in America, and I completely agree with this ranking. I love living in Madison, Wisconsin, and the list of reasons why I love Madison is very long. Madison has something for everyone. It's a great city. Are there issues that need to be addressed? Yes, of course. And if you go to my website, tossifanam.net, and you click on published opinions and, and you see the list of published opinions, there are over 90 um, links that you can click on. Things that I've written, things that got published in different newspapers. Then you'll find out that as a Madison resident, I have pointed out different issues that the city is facing, public safety challenges and um, you know, Madison has a wheel tax that uh, that is imposed on on drivers. I've I've criticized that, and I've I've talked about other issues that the city is facing. Every city has issues, but when when you look at the city of Madison in in general, if you look at the overall city, it's a beautiful city. It's a very overall. It's a very peaceful place. And I've, I, I really enjoy living here. And, you know, someday I think I need to share with my listeners how I came to the United States and how I decided to make Madison my home. People have asked me this question over the years. How did you choose Madison? And I share with them 
my answer and you know hopefully one day i'll be i'll be sharing that answer through my podcast uh not today but when i think about my journey from bangladesh to the united states and my decision to make madison my home the decision to live here in the city and i've i've lived in madison for many years now i think i made the right decision it is a wonderful city i have so many memories here and every day i enjoy being in the city in spite of all the challenges that the city faces in in spite of the issues um this is a great city and i love madison wisconsin so when i saw this report that madison has been ranked the most neighborly city in america i was very happy so congratulations to madison wisconsin and with that i'm going to conclude today's episode stay connected with me my friends thank you all for continuing to listen to my podcast and i hope to be back again soon with a new episode of explore and engage with anand